We've gone over the basics of the Nuke interface. We can now move on, import some footage, and create a basic network. In order to import footage into Nuke, you have to use the read node. There are four main ways to create a new node in Nuke. The first is to go back up to the toolbar and select a node. In this case, it will be under the first icon, Image, and then I can select Read. I'll leave this just for now. The second way is to return to the node graph, right mouse button click, and choose a node from the list. Once again, Image Read. The third way is to press the tab key on your keyboard, type the node name into that cell, and once you see the name, select it from the drop down list. The fourth way is to use a pre assigned hotkey. In this case, the read node has the R key, so the R key on the keyboard. Now, if you use any of those four methods, you'll get this browse window. On the left, you'll see a list of all the drives and all the main directories. You can click on a directory name one time to go into that directory. Once you get to a folder with some footage, you'll see a listed. In this case, I have an image sequence. Nuke automatically recognizes image sequences, assuming that they're numbered correctly. So here, the image sequence runs from 0 to 90. You can just click on the image sequence so it turns orange, and then open it. Now, if you were to open a still image, or say a QuickTime movie, you'd see those listed also. You'd simply click on those files until they turn orange and open them. So I'm going to click Open now, and there's a read node. Now you can click drag any of these nodes to rearrange them inside the node graph. So let's make a simple network. What I can do is connect these two nodes together. In order to do that, I can click drag the end of this input pipe on the viewer, which looks like an arrow, and then drag and drop it on top of read 1. Once I let go of the mouse button, it makes a connection. And there you see the image sequence in the viewer. Now note that the image sequence is 1920 by 1012. You'll see that on the bounding box and also up here by the format. If I disconnect this, and I can do that by click dragging the end of this pipe and letting go, I'll see that the original project format is 2K. So keep in mind if I reconnect this that Nuke will alter the view based on the resolution of the input going into the viewer. Now there are ways to reformat inputs so you can change the width and height, but we'll save that for a later video. For now, this is OK. Let's return to the Properties panel and take a look at the properties. Of course, you have your path and the name of your image sequence the recognized resolution, also the recognized frame range. And at the very end, there's the color space. And the color space is set to default linear. What that means is, is that the read node is not making any additional color changes to the image sequence. Now, I should note, however, that Nuke operates in a 32-bit floating point color space, whereas a regular 8-bit color space operates with 2 to the 8th power colors per channel, or 256 colors per channel. Nuke potentially operates in 2 to the 32nd power colors per channel. Also, because it's floating point means a nuke can operate with decimal places. In other words, you can have a value for a color that's something like 1.00000001, incredibly tiny decimal place value. So the combination of a large bit depth and also the ability to handle decimal places means that nuke operates in a very large and very accurate color space. So we've imported footage and we've created a basic network. Now we're ready to move on to more complex node networks.